some reason, I'm looking through the San Jose Mercury in the just random stuff section for sale. And I see world's first video game computer space. No price, just, just call. I'm like, wow, I'm pretty interested in this. So I called the guy. I said, so uh, you got a computer space? Yeah. He goes, yeah. First game ever. Okay, great. Um, what color is it? And he goes, well, what color do you want? I'm like, wow, this is getting very interesting because who has a whole bunch of computer spaces and who would know that they came in all these different colors? He goes, I've got a yellow, a solid blue, metal flake blue, and metal flake red. And he goes, a whole bunch of other games too. Okay, great. I uh, want to come up and see him. These were in a Quonset hut on a sunflower seed farm off of Highway 80 in Dixon, California, halfway between, you know, the Bay Area and Sacramento. And these things hadn't been moved in, you know, probably since 1975. And so I got in touch with Nolan and showed him the pictures and scratched his head and then like a light bulb went off in his head. He goes, these were Ted Dabney's. These were Ted Dabney's units. This was his route. When he left, he took a route that we had and he goes, this yellow one's the first one. He goes, I know it. That yellow one is the very first one. I kept the first one, which is a beautiful yellow computer space, and I kept Pong number 46, and we got the rest of them running and working as good as we could. We got it all for $5,000. I don't regret the purchase one bit, not for a minute. Well, I'd say 30 years to pretty much the present. The arcades have been relegated to the back rooms and the side streets and uh, generally been an unsavory type of place. What we want to do is bring the amusement game to age. If we can give it a new zip and a pizzazz, it's going to be uh, financially successful as well as, I think, a very serious part in the leisure time activity of the American people. The marriage of traditional pinball machines and computer technology has resulted in the birth of a new breed of amusement games. And Nolan Bushnell is the man handing out the cigars. Bushnell has developed two such games, Computer Space and Pong, and believes that they and others like them will move the pinball industry out of America's bus stations and bowling alleys and into the space age. In 1971, Bushnell invented computer space, but sold production rights to Nutting Associates of Mountain View, California, for royalties based on the number of games sold. It proved a good deal for both parties. Sales already exceed 1,500 machines. Computer space, like Pong, sells for around $1,000, and is played on the screen of a standard television set, which has been programmed to display the desired game. In computer space, the player controls a rocket ship, which is trying to shoot down enemy flying saucers while avoiding their missiles. If the player scores more hits than the enemy saucers, he gets one free play. By the time Bushnell invented Pong in 1972, he was able to form his own company, Syzygy Corporation in Santa Clara, California, to produce the game. He has already sold over a thousand machines and expects to sell 10,000 in the United States by the end of the year. Pong, as the name might indicate, is a game of video ping pong. The two players turn dials which control their electronic paddles and volley with an equally electronic ball. first player to score 15 points wins. While Bushnell did design and program both his games, the technology he uses dates back to the late 1950s. Thanks to research by the Defense Department in the wake of Sputnik, 
Bushnell is now able to act out his dream of a nation inhabited by thousands of Pong and computer space games. The government spent millions of dollars to, on this technology, and as a result, now it's cheap enough that we can put it into a game and sell it for 25 cents for uh, a few minutes and, uh, and make a dollar at it. It's, a, um, it's something that the research and development really was, was done many years ago, and now it's cheap enough that uh, with PC boards and integrated circuits, we can use that technology to our advantage. The basic electronic unit of Bushnell's games is the integrated circuit. Each of these small chips is capable of storing large amounts of information. The program for a game is determined by specific combinations of these units to form a PC, or printed circuit board. The printed circuit board then tells the TV screen what to do. A single printed circuit board is all that is required to operate Pong, whereas 15 years ago it would have taken enough tubes and wiring to fill an average house. Bush now first saw the commercial potential of video games in a game called Space War, which has been played at computer centers around the country for several years. We used to play uh, Space War a lot at the AI project at Stanford, which uh, is a big computer complex. And um, one day it just hit, you know, this is a lot of fun. You ought to be able to package it and sell it for a price. And, you know, one thing leads to another, and pretty soon, from doodling on a scratch pad, you're actually working out some basic block diagrams, and from there you think, boy, you know, it's going to work. You know what the Atari motto is? Innovative leisure, right? Well, it didn't say innovative arcade games. It didn't say innovative video games. It said innovative leisure. It was broad from day one. I mean, Nolan always had a consumer game in his mind because that's what he hired me to do. And I wound up doing the wrong thing and making a hit coin-op game, right? When I was at Ampex, I learned how to make sync generators, synchronizing the basic fundamental uh, uh, circuit necessary to get a TV signal because we had to generate an analog signal. So you do that and you get the ball at one speed and you put paddles up and it's not it's a very very boring game and uh, uh, so I had to I added the speed up and I added the angles off of that just you know what to make it so playable interesting and uh, and so I eh, started getting a little interesting. That's cute. And Nolan said, well, it's got to have score. We had a pretty good game. And hey, great. So what are you going to do for sound? He goes, sound? I'm already over budget. What am I going to do? Uh, uh, and Nolan said, well, I want the sound of a roar of a crowd of thousands applauding your win. And Ted said, I want boos and hisses. And I'm thinking, how do I do that? Listen, I got video. I got the goddamn game up. Uh, now you want me to do this. I'll be right back. So I was pissed around for a day and poked around sounds that already existed in the vertical sync generator and gated them out with the 555 timer. I love it. Years later, the sound is so well thought out, so appropriate. It was like, are you kidding me? It was just, you know, just thrown together in, in spite of what the boss said. And so uh, that, that was how, that was how uh, Pong came to be.